Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar with Picture Instruments uh, Incorporation. It's um, uh, on one hand, it's data color with um, Picture Instruments with Master Match. We're talking about Master Match today, and you will have a nice evening because we. It's a second webinar. We are. Today, we are talking about a matching multiple photos and video cameras, including foot, uh, log footage and archiving a specific look such of a popular camera. Today with me, it is um, Robin Knox. He is yeah one of oh, the brain uh, from Picture Instruments, software engineer and photographer. Um, welcome, Robin, for tonight's webinar. Yeah, welcome everybody also from my side. Hello. Okay, and you see me, uh, Boris Bergman. I'm a data color uh, responsible for training and support. So um, the webinar duration will be about an hour plus minus a few minutes. Afterwards, we will go into a section where we talk about question and answers. We will answer all the questions you may enter during uh, the webinar and uh, also at the end of the webinar, so please feel free. On the other hand, we have a few questions we would like to ask you as well, so um, that's what we will do. The webinar will be recorded, the recording will end at the end of the presentation. You will get a link with the recording to the webinar with the follow-up mail. This mail will be sent out um, beginning of next week. Okay, so that's it. And um, I will just start now. We are, I've already mentioned, we talk about a webinar series out of three. What I would do, I will um, turn off my camera now because this is also not inside the recording. So this only takes bandwidth and this is what I will not do. Okay, we have three webinars. So one, uh, had happened last week on the 14th, and there is another one to come next week where we talk about tips and tricks with Spider Checker and Master Match and what can go wrong, what can you do to avoid issues. This is the um, theme what we are talking about next week, but today it's about matching multiple photo and video, and uh, this gives us creating. Uh, uh, the agenda, creating the same look at, across cameras, for example, for wedding photographers, shooting of image films and video clips using different cameras, creating a consistent look into your photo book and applying the look and feel of any camera to uh, a different image or a different video. Okay. We talk primarily on master match because most of the work will be done in master match, but you will also see our product spider checker photo, um, not uh, in a live presentation, but a few information and you will see it um, when Robin is using the product in master match. Okay, spider checker photo, um, you see it's a, yeah, handy, um, reference card. Uh, the most important thing is, in my point of view, it's matte paper and the black in here is the deepest black you can have on any reference card in the market. Okay, you see it is really handy, small. Uh, you can open it like a book. You have different cards inside. The cards can be replaced. Um, there will be different cards available in the future. Therefore, a uh, little sneak preview. Um, please have a look at our website on the 21st of September, so two days to go. It will be interesting for you. Okay, what do we have? We have a compact and robust card. It's, as I mentioned, ultra matte, extreme dark black. We have 62 colors. Uh, that means we have skin tones, six plus two. We have 24 step gray gradation, which is really good. And we have large gray and 50% uh, gray targets. Okay, good. 
So that's the spider checker photo. Um, I don't do much on this here, but what is important, what you can do with the spider checker photo and the spider checker software is you can match um, images between different colors, but you will see this can be done on videos and other things with spider, uh, with uh, master match much more intensively. And we will see this. I give you um, a short view on this page because we have three um, products. It's the spider checker, the oldest product. Um, yeah, it's like a book you see from the size approximately um, a four size. So that's um, um, quite a big one. Then we have the small spider checker 24, which is only the right part of the big spider checker. And now we have for about a year now, the spider checker photo, the small handy one we have been talking about. And this is just to give you an idea. And that's the reason here you can look at what makes, which version is the right one for you. And that's it from my side. And um, Robin, I would say, I make you promote you to be a moderator now. And so you can share your screen with us because from now on, it's your turn, please. Okay, hello again. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have started sharing my screen. I hope you can see it. Perfect, perfect. Very good. Okay, so the topic for today is uh, matching different cameras. Um, yeah, if you have a photo or video shoot or combined shoot with different cameras, um, there are many people um, out there which uh, have uh, very different cameras, maybe one for vacation, one professional camera, one um, yeah, multi-copter drone, one mobile phone, or yeah, whatever, wherever the footage is coming from. Um, yeah, the goal is to have it look similar or the same. And uh, yeah, for today I um, have an example. It was from a Qigong session, and uh, but yeah, the same is valid for wedding photographers, for image films, for photo books, whatever you want to do to have the same look on every different camera. You can apply the techniques which I show in this webinar. Um, yeah, I have it in After Effects um, because yeah, I'm familiar with After Effects uh, and, and the color matching uh, or the, the color system behind it. And uh, But the same is uh, working in Premiere and Final Cut in any video application which supports uh, color lookup tables and also in photo applications uh, which supports color lookup tables. It can be Photoshop, it can be Affinity Photo, it can be yeah, whatever. Uh, application supports lookup tables in cube 3DL format or even uh, ICC profiles, the same technique will work. Um, this session is uh, filmed by two different cameras. Uh, one camera was recorded in normal color space in, in Rec 709. Uh, yeah, for all the photographers, uh, it's a similar color profile to sRGB. Uh, yeah, what is sRGB is common in photography and the similar color profile for video is uh, Rec 709. So this one is in Rec 709 and the other one is Canon lock footage. It's uh, You see it's more made, it's a little bit darker, it's less contrasty and uh, yeah, it's um, there are a lot of reasons to shoot in uh, lock. Um, for example, yeah, the main reason is uh, that uh, highlights and shadows are not going to clipping so so uh, um, yeah quickly uh, it's yeah, it's harder to overrun expose um, but in the end you have to bring the uh, colors to a normal color space and then maybe add an additional grading and this is also a topic uh, of today um, bringing the footage from lock to a normal rec 709 color space and then makes a color matching and in the end, we add a color grading um, on top of, of the color matching. So if you first match uh, the both videos, which are at the moment completely different, so if you match them first, you are able to apply the same look afterwards, because if it's looking the same after matching, you can apply the same look. 
So how to start? Um, we have our software master match. Um, here you see some images uh, from the last session, from the last webinar. I haven't reset it since last week. Um, we have the, yeah, for all of you who not joined the last webinar or seen the master match tutorial, in the left tab, we have a uh, reference image. On the middle, we have an image which has to be matched. And here we have a preview image. Um, where you can put any image uh, yeah, where you want to see the color matching, which is calculated between reference and to match. It's applied on the preview and we have a LUT visualization where you eventually can see any problems if there are uh, yeah, some things clipping or if they are bending or, or whatever problems a lookup table could have when exporting, you see it in the LUT visualization. So. Um, to match these both cameras, we need a screenshot of uh, this shot and we need a screenshot of the shot with the log footage. So obviously, you know, if you want to match one camera to the other, um, we would uh, choose the, uh, color as, uh, the, the, the uh, Rec 709 color space as a reference. So let's go to composition save frame as file. It's just an exporting the video frame of this position. I think almost every video software can export a single frame. So maybe let's name it um, um, Qigong Rec 709. Can do it as a Photoshop file, no problem. And then I go back to my composition and go to the log footage. And then I do the same composition, save frame as file, and we name it uh, Qigong um, log. Okay. So in After Effects, it's uh, not directly exported, but in other programs, it will be directly exported. So as to press render in After Effects, bling, render is successful. So I can go back to Master Match and go to the Reference tab, load a file, go to the footage folder where I exported it, and I load the Rec 709 footage because it's um, here. That's that's my reference going into the to match session uh, section going to the footage folder where i exported it loading the log footage and here is the log footage now it's looking pretty ugly this is because master match is calculating the differences between the colors which are behind this grid and the colors which are behind this grid and it's calculating in real time. So as soon as I move it, you see everything is changing. If it's disturbing for you, just deactivate the, um, yeah, the matching. And then you can position the grid to the spider checker photo, which I used in this session. Okay, obviously the fields are not matching to easily, of course, you can rotate every single point, but it's a uh, yeah, little bit inconvenient. So there is a create modify section where you can create or modify charts and you can even build your own charts. And here we have an error to rotate it quickly. So you see uh, it's rotated. But here one field is missing because in the last session we deleted this field. Because uh, if you remind everybody who looked the first webinar, you remind uh, the model had the finger in front of uh, this field. So we deleted it to have it not inside of the matching. But these color grids uh, for different color cards are behind the set colors menu. So we simply choose the data color spider checker photo again. And now we have all the fields. By the way, if you, um, yeah, it's um, all color charts we have in the software, but if you are not using them, you can simply delete them from the menu. And uh, yeah, oh, what happened? Something happened mm -hmm. here. Looked like a crash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last three webinars, we haven't had a crash. Today, we have yeah. a crash. 
something yeah. new. Okay, um, well, let's load the Rack 709 again. I think the lock again. Let's have a look here where we ended. Okay, let's load the correct color grid and we can go on where we ended. Now it's looking not good because in this image, uh, the fields are not matching. It's, they are, it's in the middle of the black bar, so everything is darkened in the other image. Let's quickly go here. And now, if you look in detail into detail, you recognize that on the left side here is a shadow from the from the frame of the uh, spider checker, and on on the right side there is a big shadow from the middle of the case. So the case is um, yeah, it's it's a little bit uh, it has a little bit more depth, uh, and the the fields are a little bit behind, so it makes a shadow. And uh, yeah, the, the videographer has not paid attention to this, and the model has not paid attention to this. Um, yeah, but no worries, we we can we can fix this and and handle it uh, with ease. So by positioning, I position it a little bit more to the right, so I don't uh, place this field where the shadow is, and go to the other image again, and now it's looking not very good. I place the fields correctly too. Why it's not looking good? Because in this image, maybe I quickly disable it. In this image you see, some of the fields are in the sunlight and some of the fields are in the shadow. And now the to match image colors are in the sun and the reference colors are in the shadow, while some similar colors on the left side are in the sun in both images. So if they're in the sun in both images, fine. But if they're in the, in the sun in one image, but not in the other image, they are not good for matching. They make a worse result. You see it um, here. It's it's not looking great. If I turn it on, you see it's uh, yeah very harsh grading and artifacts, and you would also see it obviously in the LUT visualization. Of course, uh, as you learned in the last webinar, we have a LUT smoother, so you can uh, easily smooth it out. So if you smooth it, smooth more, smooth more, it will look better. So if you go back, it's looking better, but it's not great. It's it's not uh, not the way to go. Maybe let's reset it. The way to go is we can simply create modify and modify our color target. So all these fields which should not be considered in the calculation, we simply delete. So we can press a trash bin icon to delete points, and then we simply click the points to delete. And you see, by deleting more and more points, the results is getting better, and now it's looking fine. Yeah, Robin. Uh, what, as you mentioned, this uh, um, is an issue by the model, by uh, the one who uses the camera, and all the reference cards which are um, used should be. Uh, hold in a hand and should be handled showing into different directions when being recorded so that you have at least a frame where the situation is best as possible. So no shadows, no reflections and so on. Uh, yes, I would I would I would hold it a little bit more towards the sun, maybe on an on a 40 or 30 degree angle, but the same with every color card. It's not uh, depending on on uh, this special yeah. color card. It's it's a little bit of learning and and trying to understand how to hold the card. But I think that's an, a special topic of the third webinar. Uh, you can make a lot of mistakes. Hold your finger in front of the fields, touch the fields, uh, make shadows and not shadows. Uh, yeah. But in this footage, we, we have this case. Uh, so we simply delete the points on the right side. And uh, yeah, we can still match it because the fields on the left side are pretty good. And uh, we can use them for the color grading. Yeah, perfect. So. For all those who want to learn more, please register for the next webinar. Yes. Um, yeah, the 
preview, it's it's um, just a third image. You can um, put any image as a reference. If you want to see the grading from this to this, you want to have a preview in this field, you can either export another frame and then uh, yeah, use it to control. But um, at the moment, yeah, I don't want to export another frame. So I simply make a screenshot maybe. So taking a screenshot here because um, yeah, the second clip here from the session is the same as the second uh, color checker. It was the same camera settings. And the first one which we exported is the first longer clip from the session. So I just screenshotted the lock session and I put it in the preview and just press Command V to paste it from the clipboard. Uh, yeah, it's Control V on Windows or Command V on uh, Mac. So in the end, we see the color matching from this to this to this. Now we want to have it in After Effects uh, yeah, to color grade our footage. Um, what we are doing, maybe first before we export it to, to um, After Effects, we look a little bit into the settings. So here on the right side, we have two sections, the lock conversion section and the target matching section. The lock conversion section, I show you afterwards. Um, first, we, we are talking about the target matching section, and then we make another example with the lock conversion section. As you see, you have uh, tooltips for every control. So if you want to learn the software, it's easy to see what every control does. But it's uh, yeah better to explain in, as a person. So yeah, that's why we are joining the webinar. Here, um, yeah, the Lutz Musa I already showed you. It's, it's if you have uh, some mismatching fields or whatever uh, things in the image which you can't get rid of. The, yeah, the best solution is always getting rid of the problems and not letting them occur. The second best option, if you don't have a chance, you can do the Lutz Musa. The Lutz strength is, yeah, it's just 100% means we match from this to this, but uh, yeah, you can reduce the effects so on the left side, it's the original lock footage, and on the right side, it's the color matching, just in case if you want to reduce the effect. Then we have three sections on the right side. It's the gray axis stabilization, an harmonized saturation, and a master match, and it has some sub-entries. Maybe let's start with the gray axis matching. If I turn it off, it's the original log footage. If I turn it on, then uh, it's a multi multi level white balance happens. So all these fields, which has a dotted frame, they are defined as neutral colors in the field in the in the color checker. So these are the, the gray colors which has to be neutral. So we take all of these fields and make a white balance to every of these fields. So if I can show you, I made an example with only three fields in this uh, spider checker photo. We have uh, defined six gray, grayish or neutral fields. But in my example in Photoshop, I illustrated it with three points. So the R, G, and B, values will be uh, aligned to every of these uh, yeah, brightness levels. And furthermore, we are coming to the next entry, which is the keep 0 to 55 option. Let me quickly turn this off. I can explain it as the next uh, feature. So the keep 0 to 55, the difference, if we don't keep 0 to 55, then the last value will interpolate it to the end of the color space with the same settings or the same RGB difference. The RGB difference will be neutralized and it will be neutralized until the end of the color space. But if you are enabling the keep 0 to 55, then artificially we add a complete pure white and a pure black field to the color checker. So if you see this, uh, yeah, this, even the spider checker photo, as Boris mentioned, has the darkest black and it's very, very less reflective. But if you pick the color here, it's not 
zero, zero, zero. It's maybe 10, 10, 10 or 12, 12, 12. It's, it's not 100% pure black. So what we are doing, if we are choosing the keep zero to 55 option, we add an additional point here and then everything is interpolated towards the end of the color space, toward space towards pure white and towards pure black. But yeah, Siri is good, but how does it look in practice? So maybe we looking here at the face, here we see some highlights from the sun. And if we turn it off and turn it on, you see completely the difference. So if we turn it off, if we turn it on, everything is going towards ideal white. This means, there is less chance for clipping and highlights are looking smoother. If it's off, everything is uh, yeah, going to the same direction as it going before. It can happen <clears throat> that the, the, um, yeah, the highlights are a little bit clipping, but it's yeah, in most cases, it's uh, looking a little bit net, net more natural. But uh, yeah, the choice depends uh, whether you want to have uh, it yeah, more let, natural and accept a little bit of clipping, or maybe you want to have it um, perfectly non-clipping and the highlights are getting a little bit smoother. Next one is uh, multi-level white balance, which means that all the uh, all the fields which are defined as neutral will be neutralized. Even if in the reference image here is a slightly bluish tint, you see it here, very slightly, but it's not 100% neutral. So we can make a multi-level white balance. So in our software calculations, we completely neutralize the image, as you see here. It helps um, if we, uh, yeah, if if you want to neutral have a neutral uh, result and and uh, have it exactly, you should turn it on. But if you want to match one camera to the other camera, it looks more the same if you disable it because if the reference camera is bluish, you want the to match camera also a little bit bluish, more cool. Okay, then harmonize saturation, it brings the saturation of the to match image, which is lock a little bit less saturated uh, to, an, an, uh, to a similar level of the reference image. Um, most of the times you use it with lock footage. Um, yeah, it's here it's not so much difference, so it doesn't do very much, but um, the master match algorithm works a little bit better, better if you turn it on. Otherwise, if you have very similar uh, saturations, uh, it doesn't do very much. Then in the end, the master match algorithm is coming into the game and um, it matches all the colors exactly to the reference. It's the same with the keep zero to 55, but it doesn't do very much if you have it, if you have the gray axis on, because then we have all the, the information and, and uh, yeah, all informations from zero to 255, because we made all already the matching uh, along the whole axis. Um, but if you maybe sometimes don't want to use it, so let's maybe disable it. Um, so, oops, uh, protect neutrals means uh, we protect the neutrals of this uh, to match image. And this looks a little bit odd uh, or very odd uh, if you protect the neutrals image of the lock image and everything is changed, but not the neutral images. Um, yeah, you can, if you uh, have the multi level white balance on and the gray axis on, you can protect the neutral, and then this neutralized fields will be locked until the end. So it will not change by the master match again. But anyways, let's uh, maybe quickly look at this. Here you see in the face again, it's this very, very, very my mouse, as you see a little bit difference of uh, the keep zero to 55, it's a little bit, uh, less highlights and smoothing it out. But uh, if you turn on the gray axis, um, it's no difference anymore because um, yeah, the gray axis already made all the values from zero to 255. Yeah, protect neutrals I already mentioned uh, in combination with multi-level white balance, very helpful. 
So yeah, anyways, we uh, yeah, let's turn it off to have it a little bit more natural and a little bit highlight, um, match the gray axis, match the master match. Uh, and now we want to export the look to um, use it in After Effects. Um, so we have the export LUT function. So we are exporting the color matching LUT. As I described in the first webinar, we have three sections, lock conversion, color matching, and a combined look LUT. Uh, yeah. Lock conversion we will talk about in the next example when we talk about the lock conversion section. This is a color matching section and a combined lookup table are both sections together. So let's for now export the color matching lot and say, um, yeah, it's, it's got Qigong lock to uh, rex709.cube save it and now in after effects um yeah you need an uh, the possibility to uh, apply a lookup table um yeah you have to find out for every program uh you know how to apply lookup tables we have some tutorials on our website for some common applications uh, yeah where we made a short tutorial where to find but in after effects you go to the effect section and just type lut so you find all effects effects uh yeah which are Uh, yeah, this LUTs. We have a LUT mixer, but that's our own software if you want to mix several LUTs together. But for now, we only want to apply a LUT and uh, yeah, let's go with the After Effects onboard uh, feature. So it asks already for the lookup table and I apply it. And now I made a mistake. Guess what? I applied the lock to Rack 709 to the Rack 709 footage. So the bright footage was even made brighter. That was a mistake. I wanted to match the lock footage. So going to the lock footage, dropping the effect to the lock footage, choosing the lookup table, and here we go. So we have this first clip not modified, and we have the second clip modified. Are there any questions, Boris, which I can answer? No, no questions at the moment. Uh, so for all of you, if you want to, uh, if you have any questions, just type them in. There is a question um, uh, section in, uh, in the GoToWebinar tool. So if you want, just type it in. We are going to answer them. Thank you. Uh, but maybe at the other hand, you have now worked with two cameras which look as one. Maybe it would be an idea to check uh, with our uh, attendees um, what type of cameras they do use. What do you think? Well, we yes, we, we, can, we, we, we can ask them and then we can uh, talk about this uh, later. Yeah. Okay, so please, um, you will see this little poll window um, which uh, just you can select what you are using please should we go on while this uh, question is there or uh, um, no we just uh, yeah we're we, waiting okay. we are waiting another two seconds most of you have answers thank you i will close this now and share the results with you you see the majority is taking photos but we also have uh, dslr ca camera usage in with video and we have 11 percent professional or semi-professional uh, video shooters here okay thank you okay please um robin continue Okay, um, so next example, um, yeah, I'm, I'm going on with the, with the same footage, but um, I want to match both cameras, or yeah, I'm, I want to match both cameras to a third camera, which I don't own. So how about doing this? Um, yeah, as you saw in the first webinar, we have here, uh, you can load a file or we can have templates. In the first webinar, we talked about neutralizing uh, footage. So I have the spider checker photo neutral, natural and the neutral spectrometer. Everybody who wants to know more about this can watch the recording of the first webinar. 
but now I need some templates for some camera uh, yeah, color information. How about doing this? Going again to the settings and here we have some reference colors. So first you have to choose which color checker you own. In this case, we are working with the spider checker photo. And here we have for several cameras, we have several profiles, which we all recorded. We measured the colors and then we put them as a template into the master match software. So if we want, for example, to show how both cameras look in Blackmagic uh, video color templates, um, yeah, we apply this. If you think nothing happens, uh, it already, let me quickly look here, it already occurs here. So that's, if you want to add more than one, you can quickly go, it's by the checker photo, let's say we want to say um, whatever, Canon look, EOS neutral, then we want to add, uh, yeah, I think um, Fuji has some nice uh, filmic profiles in the camera. Maybe let's uh, take the Provia and let's take the Fuji Velvia maybe. So I think that's enough for today. Um, now I have this to match image and as a reference image, I load the template. So let's first load the template. Maybe yeah, let's start with Fuji Velvia. And we see that's the colors of the Fuji Velvia. And in the to match image, we have the same problem uh, by loading the reference card. It loaded again all fields, which are in this case, they are in the sun. But in the other case, they are not in the sun. And even if they're in the sun, you see some of these fields here are in the shadow, for example, the skin tone fields. And you see in the skin tones, you have these artifacts. So again, even, even if it's a safe color template from our side and, and not the, the template you created on your side, you can delete these points and everything, especially the skin points, you see skin is getting better as soon as I delete all these points. Okay, it's still looking a little bit unnatural. Let us check what happened. So maybe because of the protect neutrals and the multi-level white balance, and let's do this out and put it down. So now I think it's looking fine. So if you once deleted the points and the grid is set to, to, to your image, you can load different templates and choose which profile you like the most on your, on your footage. And as I described uh, in, in the uh, last webinar, there is a shortcut which you can press while loading the profile and you don't have to delete all the points again and again. So if I press the option key while checking the next one, let's say neutral, let's say Canon, let's say Blackmagic, let's say whatever, Velvia, Oh, it it's, uh, loads the checkboxes again, so you have to yeah, uncheck them. But yeah, first you can uh, easily check which filmic profile your footage matches best. In this case, maybe let's uh, go with the Blackmagic Video one. And uh, yeah, let's uh, turn the multi-level white balance off and the protect neutrals off and this one off and this I don't need. It's a little bit more flat, but um, yeah, we have still the option to do some color grading afterwards. So let's export the, uh, maybe no, first before before we export it, I want to show you the log conversion uh, section. So if I export it, it's one lookup table and the complete look from before to after is in this lookup table. But now, if I go to the log section, maybe I want to first bring this to a normal color space. You see here the histogram, you see the complete blacks are not used and the whites are also not used. So I can set the black point and I can set the white point. And you have to pay attention here. It goes 
very soon into clipping and that's the reason why people are using locks so if i use it too much i yeah i produce clipping in my lookup table that's why i don't overdo it then you can uh, maybe you can uh, increase the gamma a little bit to make it a little bit more brighter and this could be your lock conversion and then you can enable the look again and the look will be calculated based on the output of the lock section and not based on the original image so first the lock conversion second the target matching and everything together is a combined lot so let's export the lock conversion let's say uh, lock conversion let's export the color match lot color match plot and then we are going to after effects again going to as uh, this is a lock footage so we choose first the lock conversion lot instead of the matching lot from before so we bring it to a more normal color space and then we apply a second lookup table using the color match lot and now we brought it to this color profile from the black magic video profile now we want to do the same with the rec 709 footage uh, yeah it will get a little bit less country is trusty so you can do some uh, more color matching afterwards so let's go back to master match and see to match image is now the rec 709 footage so again everything looks disturbing because uh, yeah fields are matched which are totally off but um, yeah, in this case we can quickly drag them to the edges of the spider checker pay attention that you don't hit the shadows make it where the bright sun is on the field and now yeah no it's it's a little bit blown out the reason is we are doing a lock conversion based on an image which was already in rec 709 color space so if i turn off the color matching you see what makes the normal contrast to the uh lock footage so you see this it makes from dark and less contrasty to normal to normal of course it's too much to uh, for the normal image for the rec 709 image and it's everything blows out so for this one i have to reset the lock conversion then i can enable the uh, target matching again and this is my color matching lot for the rec 709 footage so let's export the color match lot it's uh, color match rec 709 going to after effects again now we are on the rec 709 footage and uh, do we have a color lookup table no here's the effects you see the color lookup table so let's quickly drag another effect on this clip color match rec 709 and now we matched both clips to the black magic color space it's a slightly difference in brightness but it's only the brightness it, it can be uh, cameras have sometimes auto exposure on and then you um yeah you you face your color chart to the camera maybe in a slightly darker or brighter situation uh, because of the background because of the sun the angle and everything and then you move the camera a little bit and it's a little bit brighter or darker but uh, yeah see the colors are fine so if you want you can fix it uh, easily by using a brightness uh, control brightness contrast for example and yeah we can use it here and bring the brightness a little bit down then it matches with the other one i just match it uh, completely so you see the colors are the same and uh, yeah now we are 
ready with the base correction or bringing it to a, a camera which you desire and uh, now we can talk about um, or i can quickly show you how to apply a color look to this footage um, also extract the color look um, from two images with master match but uh, yeah maybe before starting with the color look maybe uh, i ask boris uh, are there more questions no there is just uh one guy from the Netherlands where we were talking about um, about the usage of the gray card, for example, in After Effects uh, as a basic, but this more refers more to the webinar from last week where we talk about all the basics here. Yeah. And the spider checker photo, it's like it's like six gray cards here. If you use yeah. this six fields in combination with the gray axis, it's like six gray cards in different brightness ranges, and it uh, corrects or it neutralizes the whole image over the complete brightness range. Yeah. And maybe another also... question. Another yeah. question which I remind from the last webinars, uh, maybe nobody asked today, but people asked this uh, in the last time. It's um, about the color spaces in master match. Um, every every image which you load in the to match section will be transfer or uh, yeah the, the reference card will be um, will be calculated to the color space of the to match image. So if you have to match sRGB, master match automatically applies the colors in sRGB. If you load an Adobe RGB, master match uh, automatically applies these colors in Adobe RGB. So we recognize the color profile you load under to match and the software automatically converts the reference image to this color space to always have the correct values. Yeah. Okay, if there are no more questions, I go on to do a quick color grading. So for this purpose, we have uh, next to the color chart mode, we have a pixel difference mode here. Um, we can't load the pixel different mode since we have a reference card here loaded and not an image. So first we load an image, load file. Um, then we have a before after look. Um, yeah, you find a lot of before after look comparison, comparisons on, on social media or on the internet. So after in this case is our reference. Uh, that's uh, yeah, how the image should look like. And then we load uh, another file, um, which is the before image. And yeah, even even with the with the color grid inside, it's uh, yeah the color grid is not on the exact same position. But you see, as I move it, uh, the look is destroyed. So this is the reason why we have a pixel difference mode, and a pixel difference mode uh, calculates all pixels. Like they are all every pixel is a field of a color card. It calculates from this one to this one and uh, yeah you see disable and enable it um, already extracts the look from the difference of these two images and that's um, yeah our color match load i can quickly export it and let's call it color look now we are going back to after effects loading another lookup table loading the color look and going to the other footage applying the same color look and here we go both of the clips are perfectly matching including the color looks It's a little bit uh, stucking because After Effects is rendering. But both clips are perfectly matching, including a look which you quickly created from two different images. Um, yeah, another idea for the end of the webinar if you say oh well i'm a wedding photographer or whatever purpose uh, you are shooting which you are always yeah if you have a kind of a signature look for yourself so you are always using your look for a lot of shootings then you can if you want you can bake in the look to 
the color checker and if you have a camera or another camera or a new camera, you can match it directly, not to a neutral image, not to a camera image. You can match it to an image, including a lookup, including a look. And now I quickly show you how to do this. That's, um, yeah, I think you should start with um, yeah, spider checker again. So here I have a photo of a neutral spider checker. You can make it yourself or you can uh, export it. Uh, yeah, you can apply an, a neutralizing uh, template in master match to one checker from yourself and uh, then export it or copy and paste the image out of it. So in the end, you need a neutral uh, color checker. Then you apply a color lookup table. Um, you can do it in Photoshop or you can do it in uh, yeah, any other program which can apply color lookup tables. And now we are loading the look we made, which is yeah, our color look cube, which I saved five minutes before. Save it and now we have a color chart with a look. And now I save this um spider checker photo with look maybe embed as rgb and saving it as a jpeg and save it into my webinar folder from today oh disabled by photoshop does this um again so enabling again and saving it and yeah sets it now I can go to master image again and load this file here as a reference file. So if this one is my reference, and now here's a warning because for pixel difference mode, both images has to be the same size. So quickly going back to the color chart mode because we want to work with color charts. And the, to match image again, I load these, let's uh, maybe start with the rec 709 and bring it here whoop what happened ah here i have positioned all the colors on two fields and that's the reason why everything is looking ugly in the to match because everything is uh, shifted towards uh, skin colors and they are graded skin colors so we quickly place this correctly and as you see the model in this uh, um, has holds a color chart as uh, a spider checker in the wrong direction 180 degree so going to create modify again and turning it again and now it applies the look directly to this image yeah so of course, again, you can uh, go to, let me quickly have a look. Maybe we won't, don't want to this and want, don't want to protect neutrals because yeah, <laughs> these neutrals are not neutral anymore. So maybe uh, in this case, you should create your own uh, color checker grid. Um, let's go into the color checker grids, create modify because these are not neutral colors anymore. You want to have them colored and uh, yeah, we can simply delete them so they are not being used or maybe we can also set them as colored points with the colored pipette this is a, a pipette from a eyedropper tool for making uh, a neutral fields and this is the eyedropper tool for making colored fields so if we add colored fields here we go that's the image including the look so if you want to use this uh, yeah, in, in After Effects again, we can export the color matching look. It's, uh, let's call it direct uh, rec 709 to look. Save it going to After Effects again. And this this is the um the rec 709 so we have uh two color lookup tables no we only need one color lookup table this is direct from rec 709 to look 
and yeah, we could do the same with uh, the other image to also match it directly to the look. So if you want to have this and uh, apply it to several cameras, um, loading the log footage, quickly position it correctly. Here we go. It's direct to look, maybe disable this and this, and maybe the harmonize, it's it's a little bit overdoing. Uh, yeah, so you see that's the same look, we can export it, um, it's locked to look, save, going to After Effects, and going to the lock footage, deleting the three lookup tables, for the look, the color matching, and the correction we can uh, yeah we can use this uh, setting and no we both we graded both directly to the look if you want to use this reference in master match more often or want to have it as an own reference you can go here and save it as a template so if you save it as a template you say spider photo let's say this warm look. So you save it and now you have saved colors. So if you want for whatever, you, you load a file with uh, yeah, whatever different image, I don't know what you want to do. And so some at some point later, you have it in your templates, spider photo this warm look, you can quickly load it and apply it. You don't see a grid here because all these colors are saved in the template, but you have the grid here and you can move it and it does the color matching of course um, yeah, you have to use the same settings to get the same results but that's the way you can uh, save a color template you can uh, also if you say oh i only want to use the left side of the spider checker you can also say uh, you can save this as an uh, yeah as an as an uh, color grid and uh, yeah you you have uh, color grids here, uh, which are safe from our side, and you have uh, these um, templates, which you save yourself here, or you can load them from the settings. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all from my side. Do you have any more questions for me? Um, yeah, there is a customer. He said uh, that he is using these different cameras, and he wasn't. It was not clear to him. Maybe he was. A little, he was a little bit fast. Um, how to um, apply uh, the reference from one to another camera? Um, maybe just uh, uh, recall it with a few words. Uh, it should be now easy. Oh yes, I, I think it was from the beginning of the tutorial. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you just press load file instead of a template, and then uh, on the right, on the to match, we loaded the log footage, and on the right, left side, we loaded the Rec 709 footage. And uh, let's quickly turn this. Oops, something is. Uh, was this was correct? Maybe. So, yeah, ah, okay, this is completely misplaced. That, that's why everything is blue because um, it was matching to the sky. Yeah, matching <laughs> one camera to the other camera is just loading two color charts of the two different cameras and then yeah, aligning the grid. And then you have a color matching lookup table between these two cameras. Left reference is one camera, to match is the other camera. And now, yeah. A little bit modifying the settings, but uh, in the end, it's uh, that's the way to go. Yes, and uh, another attendee mentioned that it is good to have uh, the monitor itself uh, with all the applications, like for example, Photoshop After Effects, set to a neutral um uh interface yes of course um i uh, would be even say more you say for those people who like to have uh, a beautiful colored background color on their monitor uh, 
yeah, don't do this on a, a system you use primary for video editing. Select a neutral background. There are, if you're familiar with the ECI um, backgrounds, you can download from the ECI.org. Um, it's a initiative, a European color initiative. And of course, um, yes, set your interface wherever you can to neutral. Yes, and uh, furthermore, if you are, uh, yeah, you, I um, worked in an in sRGB, and you can go to your project settings and to color, and here you define uh, which is your working color space because that's the color space. Um, an image will be exported, for example, or yeah, every every footage you uh, import or use in After Effects, which has. Um, color space information will be uh, yeah, converted to the working color space and that's uh, yeah for master match uh, if you export it uh, it uh, yeah it reads the working space uh, and and converts the reference colors into this color space uh, so yeah the colors are correct okay good so then it's uh, time for me to take over again Give me one second, please. And here we are. This was the last slide, and we come to the next one, which is um, where um, we have been talking just to the few questions at the end how and uh, where to learn more about color management. And um, color management from a photographer's perspective, that is also videographer's perspective. Uh, apart from the um, photographers use ICC, um, videographers often use lookup tables, but at the end of the day, it's just a different technique, but the general rules are always the same. And we have created a spider ebook. The spider ebook is uh, all about color management. You can read it and it is free of charge. Uh, so it's PDF, also um, something where you can, um, yeah, learn from or use it as a reference. Okay. Additional information on uh, data color is on our website. You go to the support section, and the, you can contact us via our support system. Uh, Robin, uh, Master Match support is um, also, um, yeah, on your website, as far as I know. It's support at picture-instruments.com. If you have yeah, any questions, we have a web form on our website, uh, yeah, or you can directly directly write to support at picture-instruments.com. Yeah. Okay. But, but please first watch the tutorial on our master image website before uh, <laughs> before reaching out. Maybe you can solve your issue yourself. <laughs> okay. Okay. The advantage if you find it yourself is also. Um, if somebody tells you something, you often have to ask. Uh, in a few months again, if you have found it out yourself, it uh, stays even better in your memory. Okay, now the most important thing is we are talking about master match promotion and also um, data color spider photo offer what we will um, give you. You see, we have a um, discount code in our um, European shops. That means uh, in the uh, continental Euro shop and in the UK shop, as well as in the Swiss shop. This gives you uh, a discount um, that goes down to uh, 69.99 euros for the spider checker photo. But this is only half the truth. The second is important. When you install the spider checker photo software, as well when you install a spider checker software, spider checker 24, or you have a product where the spider checker or spider checker 24 is uh, part of, you install the software, you activate the software, and with the activation, you get a second email with a discount code that is valid for master match at the picture instrument shop. And this is an offer of 195 euros off, which is, um, uh, no, it's 195 euros um, 
uh, enterprise. So that's 149 euros off, 132 British pound off. So you have a second discount when you purchase master match at the shop from Picture Instruments. And for all those who have um, already have a spider checker, and you don't want to have a second one, and you see we have a discount code at the um, Picture Instruments shop, it's data color 99, and this will give you a 99 euro discount. This is at the moment around um, 85 British pound. The shop from uh, Picture Instruments is uh, based in euro and calculating uh, based on the current exchange rate into different currencies. So by this, you will get also this um, uh, with the follow-up mail where you also find the link um, from the webinar recording as mentioned before. Okay, this brings us uh, to um, the information again next week, September 27th. And you have seen a few things we have been already shown. Um, what can go wrong? We will have a closer look into this because this is helpful because um, it's like image editing. If you have a good quality, uh, quality wise, a good image, and you want to create something really special, special look, it's quite easy. If you have an image where something really badly go wrong, and you want to edit this to become a perfect image, you, it's a much, much harder way to walk. Therefore, um, if you are able to avoid issues, that helps at the end of the day a lot. But this is, um, yeah, the content of the next webinar next week's Wednesday. Okay, so this brings us to an end. I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for being here. And I'd like to say thank you, Robin.